Hello and welcome to Maraxotes Reviews and How-Tos. Uh, my name is Brian. Recently I put out a couple videos about casting pictures and video from your iPhone or Android smartphone to your TV, uh, both of which you can check out in the cards up here or in the video description uh, if you happen to be interested. To make those videos, uh, I went out and bought several of the most uh, popular streaming devices on the market today, uh, that being the Apple TV 4K, Google Chromecast Ultra, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, and Amazon Fire TV 4K. I feel there are a lot of people out there that at least have some iteration of one of these devices in their home already, which makes casting pictures and videos from your phone to your TV possible. Anywho, that's not why you're here. Uh, you're looking to purchase one of these and uh, you are wanting some information about them to help you choose which one will work best for you. Uh, in this video, I'm going to go over each device individually and highlight what I feel are each one's strengths as well as their weaknesses. I've created timestamps and put them in the video description as well, uh, so if there's a particular device you're not interested in, you can simply skip to the one you want to see. Okay, I've blabbed enough here at the beginning, uh, how about we dive on in? Uh, first up, I want to start with the Google Chromecast Ultra, uh, because the Chromecast differs from the other three in that I don't consider it to be a standalone device. Uh, what I mean by that is it requires you have a smartphone or tablet to operate, uh, hence the term cast in the name. Uh, with the Chromecast, your smartphone is your remote, and in my opinion, this is both its greatest strength and its greatest weakness. Personally, I love being able to use the keyboard on my phone to type things out when I'm searching for something or when I'm inputting a password. Uh, it's so much quicker and easier than using a remote control to navigate around an on-screen keyboard. Uh, also, I love being able to simply launch an app on my phone and then cast whatever it is onto my TV. For example, if I want to watch something on Netflix, I just launch the Netflix app on my phone choose what it is I want to watch, hit the cast button here, choose my Chromecast Ultra from the casting list, and then hit play. The Chromecast is compatible with pretty much every video and music streaming app out there. Not to mention, if you have an Android phone, you can very easily mirror your phone's screen to your TV as well as cast pictures and videos you've taken yourself. You can do this with an iPhone as well, uh, however you need a third-party app in order to get your Apple device to communicate with the Chromecast, uh, which I go over in detail in this video here. I've owned and used a Chromecast for several years now, uh, and I love it. Uh, but like I said earlier, as great as using your phone as the remote is, it's also the Chromecast's greatest weakness, uh, in my opinion. I have two kids, and in order for them to watch something on our Chromecast, uh, my wife or I have to queue it up on our phones and then cast it to the Chromecast for them. Uh, the Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV all come with their own remote controls, which allows my kids to easily do it themselves. Of course, many kids nowadays have smartphones or tablets which can be used to cast whatever they want to the Chromecast, uh, which does make this lack of a remote less of an issue. Uh, however, I imagine there are many families out there who have children that do not have their own phone or a tablet, uh, so if mom or dad's phones aren't around, then they will be unable to view anything using the Chromecast. I guess, depending on how you look at it, that could actually be a good thing. The Chromecast is a Google product, so naturally it works very well with all of Google's services. If you buy all of your movies and music on Google Play, uh, then I think the Chromecast is going to be one of your top candidates. Okay, let's move on to our next device, the Fire TV 4K. In my casting pictures and videos to your TV video, 
The Fire TV 4K was actually my least favorite device that I tested with uh, for two main reasons. That being, it does not support screen mirroring from a phone or tablet. So uh, I'm working on editing this video right now and um, I find out that uh, today Amazon has released an update for the Fire TV 4K uh, adding screen mirroring back in. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that thought the lack of screen mirroring was dumb. As this video goes on, I am going to mention the lack of screen mirroring capability a few more times, but uh, you can go ahead and just disregard that because it actually does support it now, uh, thanks to today's update. Okay, back to the video. And in order to cast pictures and videos to it that I had taken on my phone, uh, required me downloading a third-party app. Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no built-in functionality for this. Although it was one of my least favorite in that regard, it is actually one of my favorite devices when it comes to its video and music streaming capabilities. Uh, the Fire TV 4K comes with its own remote, which to me is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because you don't have to have a smartphone or tablet to use the Fire TV, and a curse because then you have one more remote control on your coffee table or entertainment center to clutter it up and potentially to lose in your couch cushion or somewhere else. Amazon does have a free Fire TV app you can install to your smartphone or tablet which you can use to control the Fire TV in the event you misplace the included remote, which is good. Uh, a cool thing about the remote control is you can use it to control your TV's volume as well as turn your TV on and off. If you happen to be a cord cutter and don't have a cable or satellite remote you need to worry about, then the Fire TV remote can pretty much be all you need to operate your TV. Uh, the Fire TV Stick 4K comes with this nifty little adapter slash extension, so if you don't have enough space behind your TV to plug it straight in, uh, you can use the extension and BAM, you're in business. In my opinion, the Fire TV is a great device for someone who is an Amazon Prime member. Uh, during setup, it's registered with your Amazon Prime account, which gives you access to everything on Amazon Prime Video, as well as Amazon Prime Music. There are also thousands of apps like Netflix, Hulu, HBO, Plex, Pandora, Spotify, uh, just to name a few, which you can install onto the Fire TV Stick 4K and stream from. Alexa has also been integrated into the Fire TV 4K, allowing you to simply use your voice to launch apps and search for content. Watch Avengers Infinity War on Netflix. Getting Avengers Infinity War from Netflix. Play The Final Countdown by Europe. Just like the Chromecast, you can also cast media from apps on your smartphone or tablet like Netflix and others to the Fire TV. As for things about the Fire TV Stick 4K that I don't like, uh, first off is the size of the stick itself. Compared to the Chromecast Ultra and the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, it's kind of bulky. Uh, the absence of screen mirroring capability is also a bummer, as well as its lack of built-in functionality for casting pictures and videos I've taken on my phone. And the last thing, with it being an Amazon device, there is some issues when it comes to Google stuff. Uh, for example, there is no YouTube app for the Fire TV Stick 4K. You can use a web browser on the Fire TV and navigate to YouTube, but there is no dedicated YouTube app. And being someone that watches a fair amount of YouTube, I'd just like to have a YouTube app. My guess is this is due to Amazon and Google being dumb toward each other, as they seem to like to do. Hi again, uh, it's a couple days later now, and guess what? Uh, this morning I read an article saying that Amazon and Google have seemingly resolved their little squabble, and the YouTube app will be returning to Fire TV devices once again. As of the making of this video, it hasn't happened yet, but they say it will in the coming months. Amazon and Google also made one other announcement about something that I talk about a little later on in the video, 
So I'll be popping in like this one more time to briefly talk about that. Uh, okay, so let's resume. Next up, we have the Apple TV 4K. Uh, in my opinion, the only reason to consider the Apple TV is if you are someone that is fully invested in the Apple ecosystem. When compared with the other devices I'm looking at in this video, it is the most expensive and has the least amount of compatibility with non-Apple devices. That being said, uh, Apple does do a great job of making all their products seamlessly integrate with one another. Uh, of all of these devices, I think the Apple TV was by far the easiest to set up. If you use your iPhone or iPad for the initial setup, all of your Apple account information is saved on your device already. So to log in and set up your Apple TV, all you really have to do is grant permission to your Apple TV to use this information and it will automatically log you into your Apple account and even connect itself to your home network. Pretty freaking slick. You can link your Apple TV to your iCloud account, which gives you access to your pictures and videos you've taken on your iPhone on your Apple TV. Also, all of your iTunes purchases can be found here, which is why I said if you're someone that's fully invested in the Apple ecosystem, then this is the device for you. If you buy all your movies and music on iTunes, then it's a no-brainer that the Apple TV is what you want. Uh, you can also link an iTunes library from a computer on your home network to the Apple TV, uh, giving you the ability to easily access and play music and videos uh, stored on that computer on your TV. The encounter could create a time paradox, the results of which could cause a chain reaction. Just the same as the Fire TV and Roku, you can add a lot of different third-party apps to the Apple TV like Netflix, Vudu, HBO, Plex, Amazon Prime Video, Pandora, and many, many more. Out of all the remotes, the Apple TV remote is definitely the fanciest. Uh, rather than having buttons to navigate up, down, and side to side, uh, there is a touchpad on the top portion of the remote where you just slide your thumb around to navigate to what you want. There is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to using this, but it is just really cool. Like the Fire TV remote, you can use the Apple TV remote to turn your TV on and off, uh, as well as control the volume. Again, if you're a cord cutter, this means the only remote control you need is your Apple TV remote. Apple has also integrated Siri into the Apple TV, so rather than typing in the name of an app or movie you're searching for, you can just tell the Apple TV what it is you're looking for, and Siri will find it for you. Avengers Infinity War. Another feature that I think is pretty cool is when those times arise that you have to enter an email address or password. Uh, on the Fire TV and Roku, I had to use the remote to manually type in the password. The Apple TV, however, allows you to simply spell it out using your voice. E-M-A-I-L at E-M-A-I-L dot com. Each one of these streaming devices has a screensaver that comes on after a certain amount of inactivity. Uh, they typically display pictures of landscapes and stuff, uh, but Apple has decided to uh, one-up everyone else and uses some really cool drone or helicopter footage instead. Yeah, it's a small thing, but I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, as for things that I don't like about the Apple TV, uh, my number one is the price. Chromecast, Fire TV, and Roku devices can all be had for well over $100 less than the cost of an Apple TV. The size of the Apple TV is also something that I'm not that hot on. Don't get me wrong, it is a good looking device, however, it has to sit on your entertainment center or somewhere. The Chromecast, Fire TV, and Roku streaming sticks, on the other hand, can be neatly concealed behind your TV, which is something I think many people, including myself, like. And the last thing I don't really like about the Apple TV is its lack of compatibility with devices other than Apple devices. If you're an Android user, casting things from your Android device to the Apple TV is not natively supported. It is possible, but 
more difficult to do. Uh, but again, the Apple TV isn't really intended for Android users, and I only bring this up because I'm not an Apple person. So obviously the Apple TV is not the right device for me. Finally, let's move on to our last device in this roundup, the Roku Streaming Stick Plus. Now, when it came to the initial setup, the Roku was the most annoying, in my opinion. Perhaps that's because I didn't have an existing Roku account going in, but uh, whatever the reason, setting up the Roku felt much more arduous than any of the other devices I tried. After that though, the Roku was definitely the, the device I feel I was most impressed by uh, when it came to casting pictures and videos as well as apps like Netflix and stuff. Being an Android user and seeing as I buy most of my media on Google Play, I fully expected the Chromecast to be the most compatible device for me. Uh, I was actually quite surprised to discover that the Roku Streaming Stick Plus works just as well as a Chromecast in all the areas that are most important to me. Uh, I can screen mirror my phone to it, I can easily cast my pictures and videos to it, and I can cast most of my favorite media streaming apps to it. Uh, like the Fire TV and Apple TV, there are thousands of apps you can add to the Roku. Roku even has their own channel where you can stream both free and paid movies and TV shows. Uh, to me, it was just kind of a neat addition to the services that uh, you, know, you may already subscribe to, like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, and others. The Roku remote is definitely the uh, least elegant looking uh, when you compare it to the Apple and Fire TV remotes. Uh, however, I do like the convenience of the dedicated buttons for Netflix, Hulu, and ESPN. Like the remotes for those other devices, this remote can also control your TV's power and volume, and even has voice control. Play Infinity War on Netflix. I feel the voice control on the Apple and Fire TV is better, but when you're not comparing them side by side, the voice control on the Roku works very well and I don't have any real complaints with it. As for the design of the Streaming Stick Plus itself, this has to be my favorite overall. Uh, Roku decided to put the Wi-Fi antenna in the USB cable, allowing the stick itself to be much smaller. On top of that, I feel the length of the USB cable is perfect for most modern TVs. You can plug the stick into your HDMI port and then the USB into one of your TV's USB ports and just makes for very simple, clean installation. Everyone else has these long power cords you need to roll up and then tuck away somewhere. The menu on the Roku isn't as flashy as the Fire TVs, but I actually prefer the simple, straightforward way they allow you to navigate through your installed apps as well as the other services they offer. When it comes to negatives on the Roku Streaming Stick Plus, I don't have a lot I feel I can knock it for. Uh, like I already mentioned, its initial setup was the most time consuming and annoying. Uh, there is some incompatibility when it comes to casting certain apps to it, uh, but that's an issue that's present on all of these devices, and like all the others, I can download those particular apps to the device and watch them that way. I feel that their remote is kind of ugly when you compare it to the others, uh, and their voice navigation isn't quite as smart as either Apple's or Amazon's, but at the same time, it's still really good. In conclusion, uh, as to which streaming device is right for you, in my opinion, it really boils down to what platform you are most invested in. If you're an Apple person and buy all of your stuff on iTunes, uh, then the device that is going to offer you the best experience is the Apple TV. If you're an Amazon Prime member and buy all your movies and music on Amazon, then the Fire TV is going to work great for you. That being said, uh, you can get all your Amazon content on Roku as well. So if you're like me and are an Amazon Prime member, but also purchase a lot of stuff on Google or other places, uh, then the Roku is a very nice choice because 
either Amazon or Google has made sure Amazon content cannot be cast to Chromecast and Google content cannot be played on a Fire TV. Finally, if you're fully invested in the Google platform uh, and you purchase all your media on Google Play, uh, then the Chromecast is going to offer you the, the best compatibility and functionality. The Roku does come in a close second though, in my opinion, uh, as it has almost all the same functionality of the Chromecast and allows me to access my Amazon Prime services, which is something I cannot do on the Chromecast. Okay, uh, back for the last time. This is the other thing Amazon and Google announced today. Currently, the Prime Video app does not support casting to a Chromecast. However, sometime in the coming months, they're saying casting to a Chromecast will be enabled. So, perhaps by the time you're watching this video, this limitation of the Chromecast will no longer exist. Uh, alrighty, that's it. Uh, let's wrap this video up. Wow, this video is now about twice as long as I was wanting to make it. What can I say? Uh, there's just too much to talk about to cram it all into a less than 10 minute video. But it is time for me to head out, so uh, if you like this video and it has helped you, uh, please click that thumbs up button, uh, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment if you have a question or would simply like to say hello. And if you'd like to help support me in my efforts to make more videos like this, uh, please check out my Amazon store where you can pick up things I feature in my videos like the Apple TV, Fire TV, or Roku streaming sticks I used in this video. Thanks so much for watching this video. It's been great to chat with you and hang out for a bit. I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Until next time.